Good morning guys on day seven, the first week on the Camino. Left my campground at six in the morning. Check out this bridge. Just by crossing it, you're going from one department to the next. Can I pronounce them? But you know, you know how it goes. On the other side of the bridge, I went to the first bakery that I found that opened at six in the morning because all the other ones started to open at around seven and that's too late for me. So I already have my pan of chocolate as they're called up here, not chocolatine as they're called in the south. And I also had a cappuccino. Today is gonna be a much, much, much flatter day than it was yesterday. And also no rain at all. You can tell that it rained yesterday because everything has a layer of dew, wet, except for my shoes. My shoes dried up yesterday, as well as my backpack and all my clothes dried as well. So everything is good. Let's start another day on the Camino. One week down, another one to go. Well, here we are back out in the countryside after leaving the city following the canal for what seems like a long time meeting the wildlife along the way crossing over busy roads and uh, now we're just following the corn it's getting easier today is much much easier than uh, days past and i really hope so because uh, towards the end of the trip i have a few 30 kilometer days but i know that i'm going to be getting closer to Le Pew, so that means that I'm getting into the mountain area once again. Right now we're in the plains, just going over small hills for what seems like a pleasant uh, morning. You can see the dew in the distance, the sun is already out of course, but the temperatures are still cool from uh, everything being wet I guess. All right, so one week into this Camino, and uh, you might be asking, uh, am I enjoying it? Am I having a great time? I, ha I really had no expectations for it when I was uh, planning it because this was more like a spur of the moment kind of thing that I did on the Tour de Mont Blanc, which was one of the best trips that I've done so far. Just the landscape there was incredible. So getting ready for this one, I was like, I really don't know what to expect. This is, uh, I kind of did it because I wanted to connect the Via Francigena with the Camino de Santiago, so I can only compare it to the Via Podiensis, which I did last year. And in that respect, this kind of feels more like the end of the Via Podiensis after you leave uh, the best section, which is of course Le Pew to Conk. Here it feels like you're just walking in the countryside. I haven't seen any majestic bridges or monasteries or or <laughs> or cathedrals or, I mean, the churches are all open, just the same, but the lights are off inside, so I really can't film because it looks kind of bland. You don't get the stained glass windows that you see on the Podienses. But uh, of course, I'm enjoying it. It's still beautiful landscape, beautiful sights. And, uh, you know, today is just an easier day. It feels like I'm just doing a small section over kind of like flat terrain. So, but we'll see. I mean, it's only day seven. I still got like nine days to go. Tomorrow will be the halfway point of the day of the trip. And uh, we'll see. Today I'm gonna be very close to a lake that chances are I will get to see on tomorrow's uh, stage. So guys, made it to Les Abre, the first and only town of the day. Very early, like around 11 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I have a little dilemma because I'm staying about three kilometers away from here. 
in this uh, bed and breakfast that doesn't offer anything for dinner tonight. So, as I was walking the town, making my way around, trying to wait until noon for a place to open, I came across this uh, kebab place that's right behind me, talking to the owner, he speaks English, he tells me that he makes deliveries. So I'm taking a menu with me and I'm gonna be having lunch here and then dinner tonight. Because, yes, I have to guarantee something for dinner. I was thinking about maybe getting a pizza for, the, for tonight, but if they do deliveries, then, you know, might as well order from this uh, place. Very short day. I have to say, very easy. I got here so fast. And uh, tomorrow, I think it's the shortest day of them all, about 14 kilometers. So maybe I should have combined them and made them like a 30 kilometer day. I mean, the terrain is so flat and easy that it would have been possible. But since I was just uh, winging it in a way, uh, you know, I just went with whatever was on the internet and that's what I planned. So I had to stick with it. No complaints. I get to uh, spend more time here in the countryside, the French countryside, before the final push into Le Pew in the mountains. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and enjoy my lunch right now. And then uh, I have to make it to the Jeet or the bed and breakfast before 2 p.m. If not, I have to go there at 5. It's noon right now, so I think I have plenty of time. All right, made it to the Jeet, or the bed and breakfast, I should say, in the nick of time at 1.51. The lady was already waiting for me because I think she was uh, heading out, who knows where. She told me with a little English that her daughter lives in San Francisco. So we got to talk just a little bit about the state. I'm staying here in this huge house all by myself. I have this amazing room with a great bathroom. It feels like luxury. I also have air conditioning, and for me, that's worth the price. I wasn't supposed to stay here. I was gonna stay originally closer to the lake, but of course it is Saturday and everything is booked or way over my budget. Tomorrow breakfast is gonna be at seven because I'm afraid to even ask this lady <laughs> to do it at six in the morning. Tomorrow is gonna be a very short day, so it shouldn't be an issue. You know, the best thing about this uh, farmhouses in the middle of nowhere is just that it's just so quiet, so still. You barely hear a car passing by it every now and then. And uh, it just takes you to a different place. I just spent the entire afternoon in my room after doing laundry and of course hanging it out here. There's a couple of donkeys back there. And uh, just uh, order the food around 6 p.m. just to make sure that it worked just in case they, they were, were to tell me that they couldn't deliver it to this place and I had at least an hour to go to town and an hour to come back before the sun set. So luckily for me, the delivery person showed up just in time and I managed to have exactly what I had for lunch, a kebab with a soda and I had it in this little uh, rest area right across from the house, just enjoying it, the stillness here. And uh, tomorrow is gonna be not such an early uh, start, just around 7 a.m. This when I'm gonna be having a, a breakfast. As you can see, there are other cars. More people have been showing up, but these are just like tourists that like to hang out in the area. They're not uh, pilgrims. Actually, I haven't seen uh, more pilgrims other than the two Germans that I saw this morning when I was uh, living in uh, town. The count is up to nine pilgrims that I've seen so far on this pilgrimage, and uh, we'll see. Tomorrow will be the halfway point of the trip and uh, who knows what's going to happen, of course. So yes, see you guys tomorrow at 7 a.m.